Are you struggling with high cholesterol levels and you want to know how you can best manage and lower your cholesterol levels? Well, make sure you're tuning in because today we're going to talk about cholesterol levels and the things that we recommend and the things I recommend for my patients who are having high cholesterol levels. We know that high cholesterol levels unfortunately puts us at higher risk for a heart attack or stroke and we know the heart attack is still the leading cause of death here in the United States. Before we get started though, if you are new, please consider subscribing to my channel and as always, feel free to comment and share this video with others. So let's get started. A lot of people, when they hear that they have high cholesterol levels, they are very hesitant to start medications. We're worried about side effects and of course, it's scary. You don't want to put things into your body and you don't know how your body is going to behave. So some people opt out and they say that they want to start with lifestyle modifications first. This is always a good thing because we always want to make sure that the patient is maximizing what they can do on their own before we initiate medications. So if you have high cholesterol levels, including high low density lipoprotein known as LDL, which is the main thing we look when we're looking at lipid panels, because we know LDL is directly correlated with the possibility of a heart attack or stroke known as cardiovascular event. So if you have a high LDL, normally I tell patients, let's start with lifestyle and let's see how things are looking. Of course, we want to be very careful when I say that because there's times where we recommend medications right away because the LDL may be so severely elevated that we don't want the patient leaving the exam room without taking a medication. But we'll talk about that in a minute. If you and your doctor decide to go with lifestyle changes, here are the things that we normally recommend. We want to make sure that you're changing your day-to-day -day habits, which includes reducing the amount of total saturated fat in your diet. If you are overweight, we normally recommend losing weight and bringing your BMI within the closest as you can to your target BMI for your height and your weight. You want to make sure you're increasing your exercise regimen. So if you're inactive, I normally recommend to my patients to start going to the gym, doing some walking around the house or where you live, anywhere where you feel safe. You can exercise pretty much anywhere, including your own living room. So now there's so many helpful videos all over the internet that you can follow or simply go take a walk. What is the best diet for someone with high cholesterol levels and someone with high LDL levels? We know that a plant-based is actually the most effective, excluding animal products such as red meats, bacon, sausages, any of those, because those tend to be very high in saturated fats. So you want to make sure that you're avoiding those at all costs. The most common reason why people quit lifestyle adjustments and they get very discouraged is because they don't realize that it can take nearly six to 12 months for someone to actually see the effects and to see what it does to the cholesterol level. If you are someone that wants to control your cholesterol levels through lifestyle modifications, you want to make sure that you're being patient, stay consistent, don't give up, and maybe have your lipid panel rechecked again in six months because rechecking it earlier may not show the, the benefit or the results of all the changes that you've made. And some people can give up and just say, forget it. But we always want to make sure no matter what your cholesterol levels are, is you want to make sure that you're leading a healthy and active lifestyle, including a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit, and laying off on the saturated fats. So you might ask me, well, what about statin therapy? So we know that statins are one of the most and best studied classes of medications and the most commonly used drugs for lowering LDL cholesterol. We know that with diabetics, because the chances of a heart attack or stroke are almost five times more than someone else who does not have diabetes, normally we will initiate statin therapy very, very soon, much sooner than we would with someone who does not have diabetes. The reason why is because they are the most effective drugs for prevention of coronary heart disease, heart attack, stroke, and even death. For this reason, things like atorvastatin, rosuvastatin, you may know it as Lipitor or Crestor, and several other statins are so widely used. Normally, the standard of care is for diabetics, we want to initiate a cholesterol medication like a statin because we want to prevent. We're not only treating high cholesterol, but we're also thinking about the patient 5, 10, 15 years from today. And we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to try to minimize the chances of, of a cardiovascular event. Statins decrease the body's production of cholesterol and increase removal of cholesterol by the liver. 
So they reduce the LDL cholesterol by nearly 25 to 55%. In addition, they can actually help lower triglycerides as well. Statins can help reduce inflammation and may prevent heart attacks, strokes through this mechanism. For this reason, guys, statins are, are highly encouraged with diabetic patients. You may notice that, you know, even if your cholesterol levels are normal, as I mentioned, statin therapy will be discussed with a diabetic patient because it is standard of line therapy to make sure that we are preventing. So we want to know a couple things if you are on statin or if you're considering going on statin therapy and it's something that you're kind of discussing with your doctor about. Unfortunately, there is some potential side effects. The most common side effects that I see with my patients is muscle aches, pain, or weakness. A common question that people always ask me is, do statins cause diabetes? And the answer is yes. Statins can increase your chance of diabetes if you are a pre-diabetic. The benefit that statins give, we normally don't discourage the use of statins, but we encourage those patients that are pre-diabetic to maintain a very active lifestyle and to eat as healthy as they can so they can reverse the pre-diabetes and of course stay on top of it as we know statins can sometimes cause a higher glucose levels leading those patients to become diabetic but i truly believe that living a healthy lifestyle statins really should not make a huge difference also you want to be very careful with statins if you are on statin therapy you want to make sure you're trying to avoid grapefruit or grapefruit juice because it can increase the risk of side effects so we want to minimize the possibility of those side effects. For that reason, I normally tell patients, try to avoid grapefruit or grapefruit juice completely so that we cannot run into that issue. Some stands are best if taken at bedtime, while other stands can be best if they are taken with a meal. For that reason, make sure you're taking your cholesterol medication as directed by your doctor. Zevia is another medication that we use for diabetes, blocks the body's ability to actively transport cholesterol from food, as well as cholesterol that the body produces internally. So we know it helps lower LDL cholesterol by roughly 20 to 25%. So it's not as effective as statins, but we're still getting some benefit from Zedia. And it has relatively few side effects. So I do notice that people tolerate Zedia quite well. Normally we do prescribe Zedia in combination with statins. The only time I prescribe Zedia alone is if the patient can absolutely not tolerate statin therapy. Then normally I will initiate Zedia afterwards. Another class that we use would be your bile acid sequentrant. Well call or Questrin you may have seen in the past. And what it does is a medication bind to bile acids in the intestines, which reduces the amount of cholesterol the body absorbs from food. So we don't use this class as much. Some common side effects would be like nausea, bloating, cramping. Um, and we always want to make sure that we're watching the liver as well with this. Bile acid sequestrants, unfortunately, can interact with other med medications like the Joxin, which is a cardiac medication. For that reason, you, we're normally very careful about what the patient is taking. I don't prescribe this medication as much. Now, what about omega-3? We know that the oily fish, such as bluefish, sardines, salmon, anchovies, they do contain two important fatty acids called the DHA and the EPA. And we know that eating a diet that includes one to two servings of oily fish per week can actually help lower your triglyceride levels and reduce the risk of death from coronary heart disease do encourage including more of these fish in your regular diet to maintain heart healthy and of course to maintain your health overall. Now FYI, garlic does not show to lower cholesterol levels. We know that garlic is very yummy and it makes food taste so much better. But if you are using garlic, hoping that it will lower your cholesterol levels, according to up to date, there's actually no benefit of taking garlic and no association with garlic lowering your cholesterol levels. So I'd like to make this video very light. I did not go into all of the other classes that we don't use as much. I kind of spoke about the class that we use the most. Please comment below and let me know if you're taking any medications for your cholesterol or if you're managing your cholesterol through diet. Until next time, diabetes fam, make sure to stay healthy and happy. I'll see you all on the next video.